I would allude to kind of where we are now um, as base camp. I think nine years is, we're going into the ninth season, has just established a really clear point of reference. Not a point of reference that deviates much on any given year. Um, it's not too high in terms of wins and losses, and it's not too low in terms of wins and losses. It's, it's uh, among the nation's elite, but there's still more room to grow. It's National Signing Day, and that means for football fans across the country, it's a chance to take a glimpse of the future. I'm Jared Lloyd, sports editor for the Daily Herald. Joining me, Jason Franchuk, BYU football columnist for the Daily Herald. We're here at BYU where they had a, a press conference where uh, got the first chance to, to hear from Bronco Mendenhall about the, uh, the current class and also hear from new offensive coordinator Robert and I. Jason, thoughts on today? Well, first, it's an exciting day. Bronco said it, we'll say it. We don't know. I mean, we'll put this video of Richard Teasdale's in a time capsule in five years from now. We'll kind of look back and say, hey, how did it turn out with the, with these guys and the, the guys they've had that have come up low key as far as Cody Hoffman. We know Ziggy Ansah, who I heard today he didn't know how to put on football pads. <laughs> Imagine we, that. that. Anybody heard that before? I'm you know, not right about that because yeah. I don't think anybody else got that today. <laughs> but, you know, with this team, they got really what we knew they were going to get. They needed offensive linemen especially. They needed defensive linemen. And, and this age projection with, with the new missionary rules and when these kids will go out, that 2015 class is a concern. So they got a lot of junior college kids that will play presumably 2013, 2014 and open up a lot of things in 2015. But I was over at the Cougar Club room and talking to Paul Tidwell. They're excited. I think they like this low-key group. It's a group of kids they're comfortable with. And I think they feel like they didn't take a whole lot of break the mold chances like they did a few years ago with Kyle Van Noy. But I think they're comfortable with what they've got going forward. So they got some nice pieces. Not a huge recruiting class as far as four-star, five-star recruits. One four-star guy, um, but uh, Mendenhall, of course, talked about how stars aren't the biggest thing to him. He wants guys that are going to fit in the program. That's the most important thing. So, uh, you know, big day for as far as that goes, but everything, one of the things that's been on everybody's mind is the, is the coaching staff, and Mendenhall said they kind of put that on pause a little bit to finish off recruiting. And so no offensive coaches announced today, but they said they are going to finalize that staff looking for two more spots. Yeah, two things interest me. One, listening to Robert and I, of course, he's back from a couple years ago. I've talked to a few people, Jared, that were surprised he ever left. I mean, they feel like the conflicts were not Robert, but other people in place. And there's been a clearing house, obviously. So he's back. And, you know, it was interesting. The only difference I thought from I remember meeting him his first day. He was announced the same day as Bronco Mendenhall in 2005. And the only difference was he didn't bring the leather jacket back. I was hoping it's a nice, crisp, cool day he'd bring that back. But same guy. And like uh, my friend Rich Rodriguez, I've got something to prove. And the number one thing I would like to prove is if we can get an offense that has in place with the same passion that uh, what they've done on the defensive side of the football. It's phenomenal. You know, I think Robert, well, it'll be interesting to see Robert and I if he still has his surly days. I remember their days, you talk to him and he'd sit down and he'd want to talk for 20 minutes. And I had a few times, and I know other media people did too, that he'd brush you off real mm -hmm. quick and just kind of go in. So. What has he learned? Is he the same guy? Is he a different guy? I hear talking to Paul Tidwell, he's the same guy at the core, but I think his intensity, his enthusiasm to be back in Provo is palpable. And I think that's important to this staff because they've got things to fix. And talking to coaches, Jared, after that poinsettia bowl, there were two standards on this team. There was a defensive standard, there was an offensive standard. A lot of people noticed that the offensive standard wasn't working, it wasn't the right mm -hmm. thing, and Robert and I is here to clear that back up. Yeah, he was very clear about his goal, and that was go fast and go hard, and he wants both offensive and defensive players you know, to kind of be on the same page as far as that goes. And, and he has big plans. You know, he said, he said something interesting as far as the current team. He said he hasn't looked at it a whole, much, a whole lot. He wants guys going into spring ball with a clean slate so he gets a chance to kind of look at them and evaluate them. So who knows what's that, what that's going to mean overall for the offense uh, moving forward. Yeah, you know, I, it'll be interesting to see also because it, it looks like BYU is not going to necessarily, they'll have a recruiting coordinator, but it will not be a coach on staff. It looks like it's going to be Patrick Hickman. So I was talking to Paul Tidwell over at that Cougar Club meeting. Bronco had been over there. They introduced the recruits, showed a nice little video and everything. And going forward, it's going to be interesting to see. Bronco did the same thing over here where he talked about the values of this program, what they stand for, but also the successes they've had. I'm curious to see in the next few years, Jared, one, how many of these guys stick around? You mm -hmm. know, we all know 
things play out. I mean, you look at I, I look at Ross Apo as a prime example. He probably figured he would not be the second receiver behind a kid from Crescent City, Oregon. You know, a few years California, ago, yeah. or California. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. California a few years ago. And also, he probably didn't think he'd be engaged at this point in his life. So you look at Ross alone, a Texas kid who's done well here but could do better, and it shows you how broad the experiences are for kids. But I'm curious to see how many chances. BYU takes down the road. How will uh, Braden Kearsley turn out? They're really excited about him. But it, it's a neat day. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't get to sign with anybody in particular. I mean, Kansas barely took me, and that's just because <laughs> I threw $1 bills at them and $5 bills. But I'm curious to see what kind of experiences these kids have. And Jared, you know, as well as I do, it'll be interesting a year or two from now to talk to these kids. And what did they think it was going to be? And what is the reality of their situation in life at that point? And that's how it all is this with recruiting day. It's a fun day. Uh, high schools around the Valley are doing the same thing. So, you know, an, a chance for these kids to, to kind of plan for their future and BYU to look at its future. Good news for BYU fans. Uh, Ethan Manomeliuna announced that uh, got cleared by the NCAA. He will be back. So that shores up that defensive line a little he, bit. He almost gets and retirement so, benefits at this point, right? I mean, he's, vest, family, he's yep. vested. He's yeah. been here so long. So that's exciting. So uh, spring can- spring ball starts here in just under a month. So uh, get going and start watching to see what, uh, what these changes will do as far as the offense goes and uh, the team as a whole.